Introduction to Conic Sections So this is about the sections of the cone. And you may have been snooping into your books and you already saw the shape of the cone that is being spoken about in this topic. It's not your typical ice cream cone or the traffic cones that you see in the streets. It's a double cone or double cones or a cone with two naps. So let's say, for example, you are in a Japanese restaurant and this is a green table and this is a pair of chopsticks. So while waiting for your order, sushi, you will fiddle with the chopsticks. And what you're going to do with this pair of chopsticks is you will revolve it around that vertical axis. Revolving this pair of chopsticks around that axis, it will trace this imaginary surface. Okay? And the surface that we are talking about is this one. So the cone that we are talking about in the conic sections, it's not really a solid cone. Okay? It is hollow from or hollow from the inside. This one looks more like a an hourglass. Okay. Let us now produce the sections of the cone. This is our cone with two naps. And this is a plane. Okay, so imagine that to be a piece of paper or, or a blade. And we are going to cut our cones in different ways. When we cut one nap of the cone uh, in this way, our cutting plane is at a certain uh, angle with the plane at the bottom. The intersection between the cone and the plane is going to be a curve and the shape of that curve is a parabola. So that intersection, okay, so when two surfaces meet or when two surfaces meet, their intersection is a curve and in this case, it is a parabola. When you cut the cone in this way, what you produce is an ellipse. The intersection between the cone and the cutting plane will trace a curve and the shape of that curve is an ellipse. When you cut the cone this way, okay, in such a way that our plane is parallel to, to our table at the bottom, what you will produce is a circle. And then when we cut our cone in this way, in such a way that our cutting plane is perpendicular to the table, what we shall produce is a hyperbola. So that is what you call the hyperbola. Now we have this thing called degenerate cases. When you say degenerate, you know sometimes you see this outside math, I know, uh, you see this being used in, in sentences, but not in math. When you say degenerate, it's something that is corrupt. It's something that has deteriorated in quality. That's the meaning of degenerate. So what are the degenerate cases? A line. So a line, you can look at a line as a degenerate case of a parabola. So something like this happens with, with this degenerate case. So we have our cone and we have our uh, cutting plane. What happens here is we cut the cone in such a way that, that, the, surfaces, that the surfaces of uh, the cone and the cutting plane, they are, they are like resting on each other. It's like cheek to cheek. And the cutting plane cuts that join, okay? The point where the two cones meet. So imagine that, imagine that. And if that is how you cut the plane, the intersection is not the usual parabola. The intersection is a line. 
A point is a degenerate case of a circle. So again, that is our cone. And this is our cutting plane. Okay, so we shall cut the cone in such a way that our cutting plane is parallel to, to the plane at the bottom. When we cut the cone right there at the join, the intersection is a point. It's not a circle, it is a point. Two intersecting lines is a degenerate case of a hyperbola. So something like this happens with, with this hyperbola. We have a cone and this is our uh, intersecting plane. We cut it in such a way that the cutting plane is perpendicular to, to the plane at the bottom. Okay? To the plane at the bottom. But we hit the cone right there at the joint right there at the joint. And the intersection between the two curves is going to be two intersecting lines. So you can look at the degenerate cases as special cases of a parabola, of a circle, and of a hyperbola. There is another way of looking at this uh, degenerate cases. This is our typical parabola. And you know, there is, there is a width about the parabola. You know, how wide or how narrow uh, is the parabola. So there is something about it that, that is concerned with, with the width. Actually, that is measured by the latus rectum. You will learn about uh, the latus rectum when we go to parabola. So it's a line segment. So the measure of the width of a parabola is what we call the latus rectum. The latus rectum is a line segment, and the length of that line segment will describe the width or the narrowness of our parabola. So we call that line segment as the latus rectum. If your latus rectum is short, you will have a narrow parabola. If you have a long latus rectum, you will have a wider parabola. Okay? If you have an even longer latus rectum, you will have truly a parabola that is wider. Now imagine a latus rectum that is so long. It's so long, it goes to infinity. What happens is our parabola becomes so wide, it is so wide, it is almost like a flat line. So you can look at a line as a special case of a parabola, a parabola that has a very long, long lattice rectum. This is our circle. So the circle is defined by the radius, okay? Uh, the size of our circle is defined by the radius. So a shorter radius will give you a shorter circle or a smaller circle. An even shorter radius will give you an even smaller circle. Now what about when the radius is so small? It's so small, it's almost nothing. And what it's going to give you is something that looks very much like a point. A point is a degenerate case of a circle. Now, how about in the case of two intersecting lines? That is our degenerate case for the hyperbola. Okay? So again, this is the intersection between the plane and the between the plane and the cone. So you can look at a hyperbola as you can look at a hyperbola as a curve that contains two, two branches of a parabola that face in the opposite directions. Okay? They are symmetric parabolas that face in opposite directions. So imagine this parabola to be so close. Okay? Their vertices are close to each other and you will produce a, you will produce a hyperbola that looks something like this. When the vertices of these parabolas, 
that faces in the opposite direction, they are symmetrical, okay? When their vertices are even closer to each other, what you will produce is something like this. And when they share the same vertex, you can imagine that vertex to be to be the join of your of your cones. And what you will produce is something like that. Two intersecting lines. So these are the sections of the cone that we shall talk about in the conic sections. We have the parabola, okay, the ellipse, the circle, the hyperbola. And these are the degenerate cases. You have the point, the line, and two intersecting lines.